Charles Lyell, a lawyer from Scotland who hated the Bible and hated God and hated Christians, wrote three books, Principles of Geology, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. These books were the, what greatly influenced Charles Darwin to turn away from God. These books written in 1830, Charles Darwin later wrote his book and tried to dedicate it to Charles Lyell because his geologic column was the basis of his dumb evolution theory. You can see Lyell's hatred for the Bible kind of oozing off every page of his books here. On page 302, for instance, he says, Men of superior talent, talking about himself, who thought for themselves and were not blinded by authority. In other words, if you guys would just think and quit believing that Bible, you'd see the truth. This is the way the atheists still do today. I've had 141 debates. This is how they do it. He said, you rest on scriptural authority. Your problem is you're trusting the Bible. This is Lyle's writing. He said you have a religious prejudice. He said his goal was to free the science from Moses. He wanted to take earth science, the study of God's earth, and get rid of God and get rid of the stories that Moses wrote about the creation and the flood and get people to thinking that each of these layers is a different age. So Charles Lyle's the primary guy responsible. Other people worked on this also, including some Christians. But he's the guy who made up the idea of the geologic column, that each layer of Earth has a different name, an age, and an index fossil. Maybe you saw the movie Jurassic Park, named after the Jurassic layer. We can thank Charles Lyle for bringing this lie to our schools, and all the textbooks are full of this kind of stuff. It's a gigantic lie. does not exist. But they've got these charts in school. The kids will have to learn, oh yes, boys and girls, the Permian era was 299 million years ago in six months and 30 minutes. Now, it's a fact Grand Canyon exists. The evolutionists have an interpretation of how it got there over millions of years. The Christians have an interpretation. No, it formed from Noah's flood very quickly. It's a fact the Earth has layers of rock. That is a fact. The evolutionist says each layer is a different age over millions of years. The Bible-believing Christians say, no, those layers are all from the flood in the days of Noah. And these guys are always trying to erase this line and make their theory part of the fact. No, it's a fact the earth has layers of rock. It is not a fact that they are different ages. The geologic column is actually the Bible for the evolutionist, and it only exists one place in the world, the textbooks. This guy said, if there were a column of sediments, Unfortunately, no such column exists. That book's right over there. There is no geologic column. It doesn't exist. But it's taught in all the earth science books as if it is some kind of gospel fact. If it existed in one place, it'd be a hundred miles thick. There is no geologic column. This is one of the lies in the textbooks I cover in my video number four of the seminar, Creation Seminar series. Video four, lies in the textbooks. Now, you can look at Grand Canyon or any canyon and oftentimes see layers of rock. The earth has layers. But why are there no erosion marks between those layers? If that layer sat there for 12 million years waiting for the next one, don't you think it's going to rain once in a while? And why is there no soil built up between these layers? It's just rock, 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 rock like pancakes. I think they're all formed very quickly during Noah's flood. Date the rocks by the fossils, date the fossils by the rocks. That's how it's done. Finding particular fossils indicates the age of the rocks. This is all pure baloney. It's circular reasoning. Here's by Glencoe Biology textbook. On one page you date the rocks by the fossils. On the next page you date the fossils by the rocks. These books are all right here in our museum. This is a lie. It's circular reasoning. This guy said the intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply. We don't, we don't know why. That's what I was taught in school, so they teach it to you. Encyclopedia Britannica. It cannot be denied from a strictly philosophical standpoint. Geologists here are arguing in a circle. The age of rocks is determined by the organisms they contain. They date the rocks by the fossils. Not by carbon dating, potassium, argon, rubidium, strontium, lead 208, lead 206. That's not how it's done. They date them by the index fossils. Ever since the beginning of the 19th century, fossils have been and still are the best and most accurate method 
of dating and correlating the rocks in which they occur. Apart from modern examples, which really is archaeology, I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. They don't do it by carbon dating. You find a bone and say, sir, how old is this? First question, where did you find it? What difference does it make where I found it? Oh, we have to know where to give it an age based on the layer it came from. Radiometric dating, like carbon dating, would not even be feasible if the geologic column had not been built first. Paleontologists cannot operate this way. There is no way simply to look at a fossil and see how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. This is Niles Eldridge, a big-time brand name evolutionist, one of their poster boys. He says this poses something of a problem. 